Good morning. I'm Christina Chavez Nelson, and I will be your worship associate today. Our opening words are from M. Susan Milner. We pause this hour to remember those whom we have lost, those whom we fear losing, those from whom we are separated, those to whom we would extend a helping hand, a caring heart, the will to live. We pause this hour also to hope for life and good living, for love and kind words, for reconciliation, for the support of family and friends, for meaning in our struggle, for wholeness. May our memories and hope renew us for the days and nights to come. saying our chalice lighting words who are from George G. Davis. To be strong enough to gain mastery over ourselves and humble enough to be willing to learn from others. To be brave enough to choose the right road no matter how hard it might be and patient enough to keep on in spite of obstacles. To be wise enough to know our own shortcomings and honest enough to admit the excellence of others. To be proud enough to command the respect of strong individuals and gentle enough to win the love of little children. To be careful enough to protect the goods of others and generous enough to share our own. This is our aspiration for today. Please join us in the words of affirmation. We believe in love. Love is the only doctrine of this church. We believe in truth. The quest for truth is our sacrament. We believe in helping others. And service is our prayer. We believe in the sacredness of life. To dwell together in peace, seek knowledge and freedom, serve humanity and fellowship, and cherish the earth and its creatures. This do we covenant each with the other. And now for our story for all ages. Nathaniel Talking by Eloise Greenfield and illustrated by Jan Spivey Gilchrist. Nathaniel talking. To the memory of Geraldine L. Wilson, African-American poet and scholar who let so much of her glorious light shine on children from Eloise Greenfield. To Michael William Kelvin and children everywhere from Jan Spivey Gilchrist. Epigraph. I am hewn from the solid ledge of rock, the soaring songs of birds, the rocking motions of the ocean, the uplifted branches of the tree. I am a root that will be free by Joyce Carol Thomas from Black Child. Nathaniel 
Nathaniel's rap. It's Nathaniel talking and Nathaniel's me. I'm talking about my philosophy, about the things I do and the people I see, all told in the worlds of Nathaniel B. Free. That's me. And I can rap, I can rap, I can rap, 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 till your ear flaps flap. I can talk that talk till you go for a walk. I can run it on down till you get out of town. I can rap, I can rap. Rested, dressed, and feeling fine. I've got something on my mind. Friends and kin and neighborhood, listen now and listen good. Nathaniel's talking. Nathaniel be free. Talking about my philosophy. Been thinking all day, I got a lot to say. Gotta run it on down Nathaniel's way. Okay, I gotta rap, gotta rap, gotta rap, rap, rap till your ear flaps flap. Gotta talk that talk till you go for a walk. Gotta run it on down till you get out of town. Gotta rap, gotta rap, rested, dressed, and feeling fine. I've got something on my mind. Friends and kin and neighborhood, listen now and listen good. I'm gonna rap, hey, gonna rap, hey, gonna rap, hey, I'm gonna rap. Nine. Nine is fine, without a doubt, a wonderful age to be. I know that's what I thought about eight, seven, six, five, and four. Did I think it too, about three? But nine is really fine. Me and these friends of mine walk all over the neighborhood. Yes, our parents said we could. We're not babies anymore. We're old enough to know the score. We don't tow that same old line now that we're nine. Knowledge. I've got it all figured out. By the time I'm an old man, I'm gonna know almost everything about everything. But I'll bet on my 95th birthday, some little girl will come up to me and say, Mr. Nathaniel, why doesn't the such and such do so and so? And I'll have to say, I don't know. Missing Mama. Last year when Mama died, I went to my room to hide from the hurt. I closed my door, wasn't going to come out no more, never. But my uncle, he said, you're going to get past this pain. You're gonna push on past this pain. And one of these days you're gonna feel like yourself again. I don't miss a day remembering mama. Sometimes I cry, but mostly I think about the good things now. Mama. Mama was funny, was full of jokes, was pretty dark brown skinned. Laughter was hard hugs and kisses. A mad mama sometimes, but always, always was love. Making friends. When I was in kindergarten, this new girl came in our class one day and the teacher told her to sit beside me and I didn't know what to say. So I wiggled my nose and made a bunny face and she laughed and she puffed out her cheeks and she made a funny face and I laughed. So then we were friends. When I misbehaved. When I misbehave and have to stay after school, my teacher don't like it. My grandma don't like it. And when they get to talking, neither do I. I'm ready to cry. Education. One day, I was dumb enough to let somebody bet me into a fight. And then I was mad with two stupid boys, the one who was hitting me and the one who was hitting him.
I remember. I remember walking down the street beside Uncle Letty's legs, taking a nap in Mama's lap, talking to the pigeons in the park. I remember my fuzzy hat, my yellow cat, my potty pot. I remember a lot, but I wish, wish I remembered what I forgot. Grandma's Bones. Grandma grew up in the 1940s. She can still do the jitterbug, a dance they used to do to the music of Duke Ellington, Benny Carter, Count Basie, and such. She can spin a yo-yo much better than I. And sometimes she puts two sticks called bones between the knuckles of one hand and goes clack, clack, clackety, clackety, clack, clackety, 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 clack, clack, oh, clackety, clack. Uh, clackety clack, clack clack, clackety clack, clackety clack. My daddy. My daddy sings the blues, he plays it on his old guitar. My daddy sings the blues and he plays it on an old guitar. He plucks it on the strings and he sings about the way things are. He sings, baby, 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 I love you till the day I die. He sings, baby, 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 I love you till the day I die. Well, I hope you love me back because you know I don't want to cry. He sings, Daniel, 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 boy, I love you, did I do. He sings, Daniel, 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 boy, I love you, did I do. Well, you're a mighty fine fellow, and son, I'm so proud of you. My daddy sings the blues. He plays it on his old guitar. Yeah, my daddy sings the blues, and he plays it on that old guitar. He ain't never been on TV, but to me, he's a great big star. Aunt Lavinia. Aunt Lavinia is the one we never see. She keeps her address a mystery. She's waiting for the right clothes and a house she's proud of. I wish she understood about love. Wait. I heard my grandma say Miss Lomas looked like she got the weight of the world on her shoulders these days. I saw Miss Lomax sitting at her window, and I think it must be easier to lift big barbells than to lift weights from shoulders. Who's the best? People always fuss about who the best, who the best, this drummer or that one, this singer or that one, making a big fuss about nothing. I say, what's the use of choosing? when we got them all anyway. A mighty fine fella. I don't wanna be Mr. Big with a hundred different suits, counting my money in public and showing off in my new sports car. I'm a mighty fine fella and I don't need things to prove it. I see my future. I see my future clear as I don't know what. Not all the things around me, not furniture or houses or sidewalks and stuff. I just see me. My serious man face thinking, my laughing man face, my big Nathaniel me moving through the world, doing good and unusual things. watching the world go by. Sitting on my front steps, watching the world go by. I'm sitting on my front steps, watching the world go by. When I see all the trouble, I know life ain't no piece of pie. Looking from my front steps, I can see the world go by. I'm looking from my front steps, seeing how the world goes by. When I see so much joy, 
Anna. the plate and collect your offerings, but we still need your help. Please send all donations and pledges to 2737 Pacific Avenue, Stockton, California, 95204. The first poem I will read today is a selection offered by Olivia Douglas from her book, Poetry for Cats, the Definitive Anthology of Distinguished Feline Verse. Treed by Joyce Kilmer's Cat. I think that I shall never see a poem nifty as a tree, a tree whose rugged trunk seems meant to speed a happy cat's ascent, a tree that laughs at dogs all day and serves up baby birds for prey, a tree whose limbs are in the sky where clandestinely I can spy. Until it does upon me dawn, it is a mile down to the lawn. Poems are made by cats like me, but only if you can get me off this goddamn stupid tree. This is a poem called uh, Free at Last by Sojourner Kincaid Roll. This was requested by Ari, Ari Cohn. Free at Last. General Granger brought the news to Galveston. The war is over. President Lincoln signed the decree. The Emancipation Proclamation declares... All who live in bondage here shall from now until be free. After three years of forced labor, hands bound, descendants of Africa picked up their souls, all that they owned, leaving shackles where they fell on the ground, headed for the nearest resting place to be found. Some went no further than the shack out back, oft only a lean-to shed, hard ground for a bed, hard labor, no pay, but the will to survive. Though they couldn't call it their own, they still declared, this is my home. Some went to the nearest place of the Lord, to some hollow place in the bush, or to a clearing in a grove where folk gathered neath a still-standing tree and sang, thank you, Jesus, for delivering me. Some ran as far as they could go into the service of the man on the neighboring land, working for a pittance and a little plot of space, much like they did as a slave. Some made a beeline for the nearest saloon, singing a song, picking a tune, toasting the union and lady luck, setting to flow, dancing the jig and the buck, patting themselves on their whip-scarred backs, carousing from night into day. Some went the way of the river, following the Rio Grande, or swimming the upflowing Mississippi, hastening to get as far as they could, thrusting their futures into sanctuary and friendless, unknown territory. Some kept running like a stone on a hill, never to grasp a firm place to rest. Some even went to the promised land. Wherever they went, alone or abreast, at the end of their journey they cried, I've done my best. Every year in the Lone Star State, and in towns from sea to sea, sons and daughters of the ones who were held celebrate the time when their forebears got the news. The war was over. All men were free. They will always remember. They will never forget Juneteenth when their forebears could shout, free at last, hallelujah, I'm free. Billy Collins, Introduction to Poetry. I ask them to take a poem and hold it up to the light like a color slide or press an ear against its hive. 
I say, drop a mouse into a poem and watch him probe his way out, or walk inside the poem's room and feel the walls for a light switch. I want them to water ski across the surface of a poem, waving at the author's name on the shore. But all they want to do is to tie the poem to a chair with rope and torture a confession out of it. They begin beating it with a hose to find out what it really means. The Trouble with Poetry by Billy Collins. The trouble with poetry I realized as I walked along a beach one night, cold Florida sand under my bare feet, a show of stars in the sky. The trouble with poetry is that it encourages the writing of more poetry. More guppies crowding the fish tank, more baby rabbits hopping out of their mothers into the dewy grass. And how will it ever end? Unless the day finally arrives when we have compared everything in the world to everything else in the world, and there is nothing left to do but quietly close our notebooks and sit with our hands folded on our desks. Poetry fills me with joy, and I rise like a feather in the wind. Poetry fills me with sorrow, and I sink like a chain flung from a bridge. But mostly poetry fills me with the urge to write poetry, to sit in the dark and wait for a little flame to appear at the tip of my pencil. And along with that, the longing to steal, to break into the poems of others with a flashlight and a ski mask. And what a merry band of thieves we are, cut purses, common shoplifters, I thought to myself as a cold wave swirled around my feet and the lighthouse moved its megaphone over the sea, which is an image I stole directly from Lawrence Ferlinghetti, to be honest, for a moment. The bicycling poet of San Francisco, whose little amusement park of a book I carried in a side pocket of my uniform up and down the treacherous halls of high school. This poem is entitled Pandemic. It's by Lynn Unger, and it was published recently in the UU World magazine. Lynn Unger is a minister for lifespan learning. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling. Give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray. Touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that you are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has become clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, as long as we all shall live. This is Mary Oliver, Work. How beautiful this morning was Pasture Pond. It had lain in the dark all night, catching the rain on its broad back. All day I work with the linen of words and the pins of punctuation. All day I hang out over a desk, grinding my teeth, staring. Then I sleep. Then I, then I come out of the house, even before the sun is up, and walk back through the pine woods to Pasture Pond. Mary Oliver, Wild Geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about your despair, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the, white, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things.
And my personal favorite from Gerard Manley Hopkins, the world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out like shining from shook foil. It gathers to a greatness like the ooze of oil crushed. Why do men then now not wreck his rod? Generations have trod, have trod, have trod, and all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared with toil. And wears man's smudge and shares man's smell. The soil is bare now, nor can foot feel being shod. And for all this, nature is never spent. There lives the dearest freshness deep down things. And though the last lights off the black west went all morning, at the brown brink eastward springs, because the Holy Ghost over the bent world broods with warm breast and ah, bright wings. Our closing song today is number 346. It's Come Sing a Song With Me. Sing along if you'd like to. I picked this one especially for Rebecca because it's her favorite. Come sing a song with me. Come sing a song with me. Come sing a song with me that I might know. Columbus came in the name of God, and the reign of Spain and his crew did what was done to Tainos, Arawaks, Mayans. After Cortes and his mounted cortege undid the Aztecs and other Los Indios and recast the conquered cultures into ingots, gold altars, and coins. After pious Puritans became populous and plotted to perpetrate genocide against the Connecticut Pequot, who are we, the people, but a nation of emigrated immigrants? Who are we, the people, to oppressively oversee the exclusion of Geiche speaking, Tzetzal speaking, Mom speaking, Spanish speaking, Portuguese speaking, English speaking, Danish speaking, French speaking people of color? whose Central American, South American, Antillean, and African ancestors were already in or forcibly brought, sold, and bought in diverse places in the Americas long before arrivals of Europe's huddled masses. 
Who are we, the people, to keep people from cropping the amber waves of grain, for making hay of the leaves of grass in the promised land of our anthems and all American poetry? From working as rightful migrants at any righteous endeavors to better themselves, including in the vineyards where the grapes of wrath are stored, or from harvesting the field from which we get our daily bread. Lord. By Professor Everett Hoagland. Benediction for the heavy heart. Good morning. I missed your good because a plane, because a truck, because a gun, because a cop, because a government, because of people suffering, because too many people suffering, because of war, because famine, because some mornings it is so hard to rise, to wake, to be a self. There is a pause here. There is a deliberate cessation. I want a cessation to the noise in my head, to the ache in the collective heart in, of this world. When I was young, this seemed possible. When I was young, how hope seemed a spring eternal. I want to write about butterflies, about the cracked edges of tree bark pressing like holy mother in the palms. I want to write about the joy of children's cries, about birth, about the arch of your smile, how I could lose myself in the corners of your sweet and grinning mouth. This you is you reading this. I want for your joy want to lose myself in you. I want your mornings good, your evenings good, all the late nights and sunrises and afternoons and moments pressed against the ticking glass of your life. Good. Breathe for yourself, for each other. Let us breathe in when others cannot when we can do nothing else. Let us stretch ourselves open to embrace our friends, to extend our bodies open to anyone willing to meet us, or even to meet those we think may not. Let us hold each other for this moment, for this blink of human existence by Mason Bolton. First breath. That first breath must be delicious. It must be more tantalizing, more intoxicating than any drug. Fragrant like no flower will ever be. Enticing like no body scent. It must be all of this and more, yet without words or memories, how do we know? That first glorious rush of air wants us to keep breathing, wants our hearts to keep beating, wants our eyes to open and see, wants our souls to open and say yes. The first breath wants us to live all our life saying, please, God, let me live. Let me breathe for just one day more until we breathe our very last. By the Reverend Adam Lawrence. Anyone Lived in a Pretty How Town by E.E. E. Cummings. Anyone lived in a pretty how town with up so floating many bells down Spring, summer, autumn, winter, he sang his didn't, he danced his did. Women and men, both little and small, cared for anyone not at all. They sowed their isn't, they reaped their same, sun, moon, stars, rain. 
children guessed, but only a few, and down they forgot as up they grew, autumn, winter, spring, summer, that no one loved him more by more. Wind by now and tree by leaf, she laughed his joy, she cried his grief. Bird by snow and stir by still, anyone's any was all to her. Someone's married their everyone's, laughed their crying and did their dance. Sleep, wake, hope, and then they said their nevers, they slept their dream. Stars, rain, sun, moon, and only the snow can begin to explain how children are apt to forget to remember with up so floating many bells down. One day, anyone died, I guess, and no one stopped to kiss his face. Busy folk buried them side by side, little by little and was by was. All by all and deep by deep, and more by more they dream their sleep. No one and anyone, earth by April, wish by spirit and if by yes. Women and men, both dong and ding, summer, autumn, winter, spring, reaped their sowing, went their came, sun, moon, stars, rain. Dyer. Mathematics. There is no algebra for death. No life lost cancels out another. The idea that there is some other side to the equation is a lie, perpetrated by centuries of war and revenge. There is no other side. You cannot subtract and equalize the equation. There is an addition of loss, grief upon grief upon grief. There is a multiplication of loss, ripples of sorrow expanding through families, friends, communities, nations. Division is a choice. Division is a choice. By Reverend Dr. Lynn Unger. Hope nearly not there. There's no package called hope. Nothing at a shop to look for. Hope won't store like hay in a barn. It is a last leaf on a branch in deep winter. It is a singular thing, firm when it's found, a hand reached out, a word, to the marrow. Hope is fine-grained like lavender gone to seed, gossamer, a moth's wings. There's no weight called hope. It's a hand, a whisper, a moment shared, nearly not there but like a shadow, there, all the same. By the Reverend Dr. David Breeden. I have always hated to wait for things. I have always hated to wait for things. Through the windy night, something is coming up the path towards the house. I have always hated to wait for things. I think I will go to meet whatever it is by Elizabeth Coatsworth. The first pair of underpants. I wonder, did God's heart, I mean, the love mushy endearing part of God, that part, the heart that I don't really believe in as a thing with pulses, anyway, did that heart, did it break just a little when God realized, oh no, they have made leaves into underpants, if God says things like underpants. And then the weight hit God. 
like the first time you watch your child feel self-conscious. Hold back the loud belly laugh. Or worse yet, bring down their eyes because the shoes you bought aren't good enough. Did God's heart break just a little to see the beauty of freedom slip from their hearts as the heat and heaviness of shame washed over the two in that garden who now knew not enough. No more naked, no more belly laugh, and for the first time wondered, am I good enough? Did God cry a little? Maybe even turn away so they wouldn't see the tears? By the Reverend Robin Tanner. The Atheist Prays. I am praying again. And how does one pray when unsure if anything hears? In the world I know as reliable and finite, when time and matter cycle back and forth, and I understand the answers to so many puzzles, there are moments when knowing is nothing. And I, this accumulation of systems, histories, repetition falls from me. How does one who is sure there is nothing pray? I, dark gathered around my eyes, sit in this room, cluttered with my certainties, asking my one unanswered question, holding myself perfectly still to listen, fixing my gaze just here, wondering, by the Reverend Barbara J. Pescan. Anxiety. Fill me with anxiety, O oh life. Electrify me. Make me nervous beyond any staid concern for those things which challenge placid, flaccid ways, anachronisms of being. Keep me tense, a tiptoe, blinking at the novel, reaching out for those things just beyond my fingertips so that I may make patterns, dream dreams, fashion worlds, which will beat with life, for I would be a man and on the move. By Arthur Graham. Letter from Our Better Angels. Dear one, we have received your letter and we hate to tell you, not hate so much, but are a bit afraid to say, we cannot grant your requests as stated, but can only remind you of familiar things. First, faith. Faith in yourself and trust in others. We know it can be terrifying to be vulnerable, but only when you share your softest side will we be able to break through. Next, hope. Hope is not an empty fairy tale. It is the true story of all the times human beings like you have found a way to create the future, though you didn't know how. And of course, love. Love that demands you cherish all people, not just yourself and safety. Love that is not satisfied until every argument ends abruptly when one child says, that hurts. There is so much to learn and relearn. The world teaches you to be hard, to negotiate and defend, to avoid giving too much and to the wrong people. There are no wrong people. You also are not wrong. And when you encounter the poor, the broken, the unhoused and unwelcome, you are looking 
if you pay attention at us calling to you, calling to answer your own prayers. If you want to change the world, first, be sure you are changing yourself. Be tender, be kind, be at peace. Be all the things you wish for. Be your own better self. It isn't without cost but it will be free. By the Reverend Sean Parker Dennison. Communion Circle. The earth, one planet, round, global. So when you trace its shape with your finger, you end up where you started. It's one, it's whole. All the dotted lines we draw on our maps of this globe are just that, dotted lines. They smear easily. Oceans can be crossed. Even the desert can be crossed. The grain that grows on one side of the border tastes just as good as the grain on the other side. Moreover, bread made from rice is just as nourishing to body and spirit as bread made from corn, or spelt, or teff, or wheat, or barley. There is no superior land, no chosen site, no divine destiny falling on any one nation who draws those dotted lines just so. There is only one earth we all share, we the living with all else that lives and does not live, everything, everything for good or ill is part of the shared whole. Sky, earth, song, words, and now this silence. By the Reverend Mark Bellatini. COVID cry. I have a COVID cry. It's an amalgamation of any reason I've ever cried before in something new in and of itself too. It's the cry of frustration at lack of planning and communication. It's the cry of anger when the inanity of perceived inviolability puts others at risk. It is the cry of derision at those who willingly harm others with false words, price gouging, and lack of compassion. It's the cry of fear that this is the time I walk in somewhere and get sick. It's the cry of respect at watching healthcare workers, first responders, grocery clerks, garbage people, government officials, and other essential workers heading into the firing zone. It's the cry of helplessness when my child tells me he's afraid. It's the cry of drowning when you feel like all the changes will overwhelm your efforts. It's the cry of what, where, when, how, which, who, why, when a mind tries to find clarity. It's the cry of knowledge that this is and will continue to affect us all. It's the cry of concern for those not able to help themselves. It's the cry of loneliness when a hug cannot be given. It's the cry of resolve when I stand up for safety. It's the cry of joy at being able to see a familiar face interact online or just talk with another person. It's the cry of grief for all the loss now and to come. It's the cry of acceptance when I decide to write how I feel. It's the cry of discipline when I know that I can only do what is in my power 
and be willing to respond appropriately with no harm intended to any event that has yet to unfold. It is the cry of calm when I lay my heart open and send love, health, and strength. For me, there is a serenity, a tranquility, and yes, even a sense of control as chaos swirls around when I think of others. My final cry rests in these words. May all I know and love be well. And may all they know and love be well. And so on and so forth, until all that are known and loved are protected and well. Sending strength, love, and health always. By me, Christina Chavez Nelson. Come sing a song with me Come sing a song with me Come sing a song with me That I might know your mind And I'll bring you of four million cells. The body is humankind. I am a single cell. My needs are individual, but they are not unique. I am interlocked with other human beings and the consequences of our actions, thoughts, and feelings. I will work for human unity and human peace, for a moral order in harmony with the order of the universe. Together we share the quest for a society of the whole, equal to our needs a society in which we need not live beneath our moral capacity and in which justice has a life of its own. We are single cells in a body of four billion cells. The body is humankind.